Hey everybody, I'm Karix, and I wanted to take a look at a new game hitting Steam, Morel's The Hunt. I think this actually kind of fits with a lot of the sort of the calm, sort of relaxed games that we like to play on the uh, on the YouTube and also on the Twitch channel. And I was lucky enough to get a, a copy of this from the uh, from the developers, and I just wanted to kind of take a look at it and uh, see what it's all about. I've played it a little bit offline, so I'm kind of familiar with the game. It is a game about finding morels and other kinds of mushrooms and and uh, taking photographs of wild animals and stuff and exploring sort of the forested areas of the United States. It's actually pretty pretty neat. So let's uh, let's get in here. Let's set up a new game. Let's call it, uh, we'll just call it like YouTube or something. So this will get in here. And we can, I guess we could either do male or female. I, I play, I strictly play first person, so I never see the, uh, the character models. I think that's really the way that it's intended to be played. Exploration mode, hmm. Finish, uh, unlock by finishing a season. I don't think I actually noticed that. We didn't, I guess we can adjust sort of the length of a day and stuff like that. And we're loading up the game here. And basically, so at the beginning, it just kind of throws you in. Cabin in the Woods is the first map you get to start with. But eventually you get to unlock different regions of the United States and it's sort of a 100 day foraging cycle and um, you have weekly tasks and things like that too and you can find the different you know collect photographs of all the different kinds of unique animals in the game and but of course some of those animals you'll have to find by going to the different regions so right now we're in the southeast region of the United States and this is one map that we have unlocked but as time goes on we'll unlock a second map within this region and then 15, so it's like eight day, day eight, like week two, we get a new map within the Southeast region. And then by uh, week, week three, we'll actually have an entirely new area with new maps that we can go and explore and stuff like that. I haven't gotten very far in the game, but I've played it for a few hours and uh, it's actually kind of cool, but this is literally the game. Game is literally just like, you know, we can see that, that we can hit M to bring up the map. It's, it's kind of a smaller map overall, admittedly, but this is also just the first map. Eventually, you can actually go to the shop and, and spend points. Okay, I know from experience that's actually one of the poisonous mushrooms, the false, uh, false morel is what it's called. But we can we can basically this is this is essentially what's going on here. We can actually hide the hut if we want, which is kind of neat. That's a little uh, just a little quick tip that's uh, popping up there on us for for a screen. We got some puff balls here. We're not going to be able to. Uh, these aren't going to count as morels, and they're definitely not worth as many points, but we can still grab them. They, uh, it's telling us that we're finding some puffballs, and those will be worth, uh, those will actually regenerate our energy in the top right. We have a limited amount of energy per day. We can't sprint. We can jump, stuff like that. Usually, I think for the most part, I don't know why we're getting these tips popping up, actually. I don't remember these popping up before. Maybe this was part of a, uh, a release day update or something. Um, but those should be sort of going away as the game is pretty simple to play. There is a little tutorial as well that will kind of get you get you going if, if, if but for the most part, just kind of, you know, familiarize yourself with like that C is is to bring out the camera and, and stuff like that. So we can take photos of, of unique uh, animals and things like that. We can hear a bird and that actually means that there is a, like that bird's call, I, I believe is, actually, we just found our first morel. Holy cow. <laughs> so we found our first morel here. Booyah. Usually where there's one, there's many. But I'm noticing that this bird here is kind of annoying, although we can kind of go towards this bird and find it and try to take a photo. We need to go back. Here, let's go back there and look for more morels after we take a, a snippet of this, this bird here, if we can if we can find it. But yeah, we're, it's not just random ambient noise. That, that noise does correspond to a bird in the world. And if you were really good at, like, understanding birds... Uh, you'd probably even, maybe even <laughs> recognize the, uh... okay, I, I feel like we were hearing it on this side, now we're coming over this way. Maybe it's kind of shuffling around, or maybe this is a different bird now. Okay, we're hearing all kinds of different birds. Oh, it's in the tree. I gotta say, not the best audio in the world. Uh, you know, sort of like positional audio in the world that I've ever seen in the game. But there we go. We got the Blue Jay mark. Nice. And we have more morels here. This is in that original area. What we can actually do is we can actually go to our inventory because we start with a few 
Uh, we start with some equipment like the first aid kit if we get uh, poison ivy. Uh, we have the tick remover, we have the bug spray, things like this. So we could use it. We have water to regenerate, but we also have the marker. That'll actually show up permanently on the map now. We're covering it right now. And this bird's actually kind of a. That'd be annoying, to be honest. But so we can mark this area as a place that's, that's pretty good mushroom hunting. And in the future, you know, the mushrooms will likely. Uh, I think this means that essentially this is an area that's primed for the mushrooms to spawn. Actually, we're finding quite a few of them here. It took me, the first time I played this game, it took me quite a while to, to find mushrooms, to be honest. I, I was finding a few just in small little groups, finding eight, just like that. There's actually, there's even more here. Finding this many in one cluster is actually kind of a, a ton. I mean, the goal for the entire week is to get 25, and we've already got 10 just in one, more than 10 in one grouping. We're still finding more of them. So these are the morels, the prized morels that you know, the game gets its name from. Of course, morels are uh, are absolutely delicious mu mushrooms in, in real life. But you can find it like the farmer's markets and things like that. Uh, they can be quite expensive at the grocery store, but a little bit more affordable if you're getting them from uh, the actual mushroom foragers that uh, directly, that actually go out and do this kind of stuff all the time, which is kind of crazy. We're actually like, it's kind of interesting how this game is actually like, kind of an accurate simulation probably of although I guess maybe we're finding them a little bit too easy at the moment um, but people actually go out and collect these things because they can sell for quite a bit per pound great in uh, great just sauteed up with like butter garlic also great in, in like a risotto or something like that 11 mushrooms in one cluster that's huge that's actually really quite a lot uh, but I think from what I can tell, we found most of them here. And you never ever truly probably find all of them. There's always probably one that's like, you need a very particular perspective to find it. But let's keep moving here. So it's one o'clock right now in the afternoon. And the map is just a big square. We can kind of go any direction. We're probably not going to find any, any morel morels necessarily by the bridge. But if we come off the path a bit, and look around. Hmm. Not finding any. I'm sure there's somebody that's seen a morel on the ground and is like yelling at the, yelling at the monitor for me to, <laughs> for me to see it. But the thing is, this is actually the game, right? Like this is the game. It's it's just a big scavenger hunt. You're looking for the different mini cannibals. You're looking for the morels. You're kind of trying to avoid the poison ivy and some of the other things. Oh, here's a morel right here. But it doesn't look like it has a lot of other morels in a group from what I can see. I'm not noticing others. There is also a golden morel. A morel? I've never, morel. Uh, I've never seen it before. I've never found it before. But apparently like the maps have like a single sort of unique uh, special morel. That can be uh, that can be found, I guess, probably worth a lot of points. So with these points, the points is essentially like currency. It's saying points, but it could have easily just said like money. Um, but with these points, we can actually buy different equipment. We can get rain. We can get a raincoat to let us uh, forage more effectively in the rain. We can get a headlamp so that we can stay out after dark. We'll see how how nighttime uh, kind of makes it basically impossible to uh, to find mushrooms. But if you had the headlamp, you could keep foraging into the night. Um, you can get an ATV eventually to, to be able to access like areas that are further away and more efficiently sort of traverse the maps. So actually, we are finding some rails here. Very nice. It's a nice little cluster of four of them right there. See, and it's like we had already looked at this area, but it was because we were coming in at a different angle that we were able to find more of these things. Oh, I'm finding a, quite a few here. Quite a few here. As we go for one, we're finding finding others. I think this animation's a little bit goofy, to be honest. Um, and I wish you had a little bit more potential reach. I'm hearing the, the sound of, a, of some kind of animal. That one was like incredibly hidden. It was a big one, too. Kind of just backtracking, kind of looking up into the into the vegetation here, trying to see if we can catch the glimpse of a, of a morel. Oh, there's one actually down here. But I like kind of just crawling around and kind of playing it slow. Is this a 
I didn't know if that was like a frog or something. I think there's other things that they could add, like to find. There's different kinds of mushrooms, right? Most of most of the big point ones, of course, are the morels, the name of the game. And you find quite a bit of morels because that's again the point of the game. So they're they're kind of actually it's ironic that the the puff balls and the chanterelles and portobellos and stuff are more rare than the morels. Um but it kind of also makes sense because the point is it, it's tracking the amount of morels you're finding. It's not really tracking the amount of puffballs that we find. Puffballs, I think, and chanterelles, I think, are just worth one point apiece. Whereas the morels, I think, are worth... Well, we've taken the photograph. Maybe worth three apiece? I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to pay, pay attention to that, actually. Actually, not sure how that math is working out because I'm seeing 99 total points. Took the 20-point 20, 20 picture of the, of the blue jay... I think it was a blue jade, right? I think. And um, so that's 79. How does 22... How does 79 divide by 22? I'm not sure. But there you go. Kind of keep looking here. Kind of, you know, the uh, the poison ivy is really annoying when you get that because it, it causes your character... There it is right there. That's that's poison ivy, so we definitely want to stay clear. Um, it's usually you find it uh, kind of on the edges of the map, kind of to keep you... Not necessarily specifically keep you from going outside the map, but because the, the obviously the giant rocks and cliffs and invisible walls and stuff keep you from doing that. But it kind of just kind of warns you that it's like maybe okay, you're kind of going the wrong way here a little bit. But they can be it can be kind of snuck into into some of these crevices and stuff too. It's not always just on the edge, and it is really kind of a bummer when you when you get that because your characters get stunned every few seconds. You get stunned and you have to scratch your arm, and it's it's actually kind of annoying. Uh, we could be sprinting a little bit to kind of pick up the pace here. Oh, there's a morel. Nice. We're actually getting kind of lucky. And again, usually where there's one, there's more than one. The lighting and the shadow of different times of day and stuff kind of making some of these easier or harder to find. Huh. I've actually played this, you know, a few times. And I've actually not seen morels in this area before. I've always suspected that there should be. We've already gotten 20. The weekly task is already finished, guys. They've definitely, I think they've definitely uh, done a patch recently that has made, because I've been playing this game a little bit offline. We actually streamed this game um, the Saturday before it released, which, I mean, it's releasing today, so, or yesterday, I guess, by the time this video probably goes up. But, um, so I did have a little bit of an early access to it, which is, which is kind of neat. But it was very, very difficult to find mushrooms. And I feel like they've done something to make it a little bit easier. And I don't know how I feel about that. Because I think part of it is the satisfaction of finding them is, is kind of taken away once you realize that maybe they're not as uncommon as you were hoping. Um, but of course, part of the game is also going on to bigger and better areas where there's a larger uh, expanses and stuff to explore. You know, needing the ATV, needing the... The camping tent to be able to actually stay overnight out in the wild and stuff like that whereas this is just a very sort sort of like introductory area but essentially that's that's what we can do i wish we had more markers i wish we could mark that area but i guess we could just open up the map and kind of just remind ourselves like you know it's just kind of at this bottom left corner of the map is where we found those morels because it does seem to be that the morels are kind of like in spawn in like a variety there's like a variety of different spots that they could appear and they kind of tend to kind of randomly get get spread around those different spots so that you can kind of get a scent that's what the, i mean obviously otherwise the marker itself would be kind of silly why mark an area if it's just total chaos right so there's got to be some pattern to it but it's about kind of ultimately discovering a little bit of a little bit of a glitchy glitchy guy here but let's see if we can it's actually a squirrel that's stuck in a rock uh where it's not going to let us take a picture with the with the camera it tells you if, if it's going to be a successful picture by highlighting green uh when you hover over the uh animal so that wasn't highlighting green so i think that that squirrel is just in a little bit of trouble hopefully it breaks free at some point but we're finding a little camp here and i'm finding these puff balls and i have noticed that if you step on the puff balls it actually like poof they're they're gone which, like, I'm wondering if we've accidentally stepped on morels before, <laughs> like, and I'm like, whoops. Because if that's the case, you got to be really kind of careful. You have to be incredibly careful if, if we're smashing on morels or if that's just a property of... We need to check that. If we find a morel, let's sacrifice it and, and check that if we find one. 
Oh, I don't think we're finding one here. Oh, chanterelles. Now let's see if the chanterelles are more or less points. Oh, the puffballs actually would have been additional points because we had puffballs. So when we we're doing the math, I think it's probably three per morel. How many points was that? I think we grabbed two at a time. It's just one point. Chanterelles are just one point. See, I don't know. I kind of wish, like, I get that the, the name of the game is Morels the Hunt, uh, but I kind of wish that maybe, like, some of these other mushrooms that were actually more rare were worth more points so that it was kind of exciting to find something that was different than the Morels. Whereas now you're kind of just encouraged to, to find the Morels a little bit, or, or, you know, once you find the Morels spots, it's kind of like... You'd think that this would be an interesting spot for morels to, to pop up, but I'm not seeing any. Let's see. Oh, oh, turtle. Turtle. It's cool because I know for a fact the animals, there's a different combination of animals. Um, tortoise, I guess, appropriately. Different combination of animals that, that will appear when you, like on different days. So, like, I've seen a deer on this map before. And it's, it's hard to miss. It's hard to miss the deer when the deer is like out here. Um, but, but then sometimes, you know, you're going around the whole map and there's no deer. So it's just one of those things where I think sometimes different animals can spawn on different days and stuff, which is kind of cool. So the animal thing, I think, is definitely keeps you on your toes. We could try to grab a shot of these uh, American robins, but they tend to move. Tend to move at kind of a, of a brisk pace. It makes it a little bit tricky to, to get a good shot at them. But this is, uh, oh, oh, <laughs> I actually find that the bunny rabbits are incredibly jumpy. When they discover you, like, this is what happens. When they discover you, it's just like, oh, no. Now we're hunting a uh, rabbit. At least just try to take its photograph. There's a squirrel. We have a couple animals here that would be would be relevant. To... But let's see if we can actually... See, they're, 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 I find that the squirrels and the bunnies are incredibly skittish. It's funny because we snuck up on that one bunny because I guess there was probably a line of sight issue or something. And now it's like if we take a picture and we're off, it kind of stuns. It kind of stuns you a little bit. Sorry, it's kind of goofy, guys. But but the the bunnies were twenty points, and I feel like that would be uh, that'd be good to grab this guy while we found him. Oh, we actually found a kind of a little secret. Uh, it's not really a secret, but what I've got, what I kind of call a secret little cove, that might have gotten green. Did we get credit for that? No, we didn't. Looked like it was mostly green, but there he is, right out there. But there are definitely mushrooms in this area. I'm pretty sure. The red truck is kind of an iconic. Yep, we can see some out there, I think. Okay, you know what? Unfortunately, I think these animals have, have gotten the better of us here. We're kind of getting them into like a little bit of a corner, though. I wish this was a little bit smoother. I find that this is kind of janky. Usually by the time you find the animal, you get your thing out, and then you get you have to get so close to be able to get credit for them. It's it's kind of there we go. You know what? I'll take a squirrel. We'll trade a bunny for a squirrel. There we go. Seems good. Let's go back and look for some of these mushrooms. There's also po quite a bit of poison ivy in here. So it's a, oh okay. We're we're running out of time. Running out of time. So it's just gonna be a mad grab. Which means we are without question not going to uh, to get them all here, probably. This is a pretty good little treasure trove of them. Dang, we're going to get more than 30 morels in a single day? Yeah, they, they've done something. They've done something with the balance since the uh, since the sort of pre-release build. Um, which, I, I don't know. I think I think it, maybe they've swung it too far in the other direction, to be honest. 30 morels in a single day is a lot. I mean, the weekly goal is to get 25. We're on day one. We don't unlock another area. I know there's morels back here. Oh, there's one right here. Actually, wait a second. Yeah, we're walking on it, right? It's not destroying it. 
I think that would be kind of an interesting thing if that worked for all the mushrooms. So you had to kind of really watch your step. Okay, guys. Sorry, everybody. It's getting dark. I can see, but I have kind of a, a nice uh, monitor that, that makes the this kind of situation a little bit more clear. Um, but it might not be looking good for the recording. So let's let's rush back home. I'm just sprinting and jumping, and we're just heading back to the cabin. We can end the day, and I can show you guys the shop and the map and all that stuff. Because, again, when you first start off the game, it just throws you into it. But then now we can kind of show how the, the days kind of work and how they're chopped up and everything. There we go. We're at the cabin. We are at the cabin. We made it back after our first day of mushroom hunting. We got 35 morels in a single day. That's pretty dang good. There we go. So now we're on day two. Day one is ended. We're on day two. Before we start day two, we can shop. We can get the raincoat again. It's going to help us in rainy weather. Headlamp would let us continue to have kept looking for those morels even in the middle of the night, which is pretty cool. So it gives us more time per day, right? This is a game about kind of like Stardew Valley. It's about making the most of every day. I think it's kind of fun to get the uh, to get the mushroom markers just to be able to kind of mark the, the good places that you've been. I think it, because it seems to be that there is a there is kind of like an element of learning the map and then sort of farming the map a little bit because 5,000 points, 10,000 points, you need 25,000 points to, to sort of unlock that that other mode. But if we go to hunting here, we can see that there's different regions. So like in the south uh, east region, there's a whole nother map that we can unlock within this region. And we'll unlock that on day eight. As So as the season progresses, we unlock more stuff. So we can unlock, you know, the southwest region and then, the, you know, 20, you know, so on and so forth, right? So eventually we'll be able to unlock these different regions of the United States six regions and all. I don't know, like Southwest region might have three different maps. I, I don't I don't know how it's all chopped up. You know what I mean? It might just be two each. I don't know how big the maps get because I haven't really gotten that far. Um, but but at least these, I do know just from looking at like screenshots and stuff like that, that there will be different sort of visual environments and different kinds of animals and stuff that we can find in these different areas, which is really, really cool. So, but basically that is Morel's the hunt and uh, i think we're going to continue this little let's play but that hopefully will give people an idea of what the game is about what it's kind of like it's it's really a well done game for what it tried to achieve it tried to achieve a game about finding foraging for morels in the forest and it's got a lot of interesting elements i mean the fact that you getting the raincoat getting the headlamp getting the the higher level uh, boots earning the points to be able to turn in and, and eventually get the atv in and, and the way that they created it is sort of a seasonal, a 100-day season thing is really cool. And the fact that they could tie in like global leaderboards and stuff like that. So it's a, it's really at that point about like making the most of your time and not wasting any time, right? So that's kind of cool. But basically, uh, we would just start day two. We can see that it's cloudy, but it's uh, it's not rainy, so that's good. We may encounter different, here's some different animals that we can encounter, a little bit of information about Cabin in the Woods location, and we can start the hunt. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.